Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, it's still on. Hi. Hello. 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 Hello.
Science. Science. We'll do some science. I'm, I'm from the country, okay, and I'm naive. I have to admit that. I'm naive, the country. I thought it was going to be easy. Why? I thought we we're just going to go here and, and we're going to start here. Of course, there'll be a few little rules we have to get through, but we're going to end up here with medical marijuana, and that's where I went. Uh, you might notice uh, it's a little bit dark in there. I, I missed a few things. Uh, when I actually got to it, <laughs> when the lights came on, I found this was, this was amazing. You had all these, uh, all these uh, ropes and, and places to go through. Uh, they weren't, uh, I didn't find uh, just a few things. That they threw everything they could, could at me to, in order to stop this. Uh, they came to campus. You, you don't mind a, a story. Uh, they came to campus and they wanted to, where are you going to grow this? Okay, where are you going to grow this? So I showed them a, a, a room we have uh, over here in one of the buildings on the university campus. It's about, uh, oh, maybe three times the size of that desk, the room, a small room. It has, we have some lights in it and we had temperature control in it and we grow other plants and then I said, well, I'm going to dedicate this room to it. Now this room is in Stockbridge Hall which is made out of concrete. The floors are about that thick of concrete. You can see them going up the elevator. Um, it has cement blocks and concrete all the way around this room. It's just a, just a room. One door in, one door in, only one door in. I said, well, I planned on growing it in this room. They said to me, uh, uh, well, you're going to have to have a video camera outside here so we can see who goes in. You'll have to have a video camera inside the room. I said, OK, no problem. We'll put video cameras in, OK? Then they said, you're going to have to have a 24-hour guard. <laughs> OK, I said, 24-hour guard, that's, that sounds OK. If that's what it takes, we'll have a 24-hour guard. Sit here by the door, the one door in, OK? <laughs> then they said to me, uh, what's behind that back wall? And I gave a truthful answer. I said, well, on the other side of the concrete here, you know, the cement blocks, is, is a dressing room for a stage upstairs in, in Bowker Auditorium for those of you who've been here on campus sometime. Uh, they said, well, uh, uh, you're going to have to put up a steel barrier there. <laughs> I said, OK, but why? And they said, well, somebody might go out and rent a jackhammer and, and jackhammer through the wall. <laughs> now I'm looking at this room, you know, about that depth. And I said, won't my 24-hour guard hear the jackhammer going? <laughs> I thought of. They said to me, they're, now they're serious. These, these people are serious. And they said to me, well, they may not. And I said, I, you know, I, I have to confess. I said, I said to them, well, I said, you may not know, but you're on a college campus. You can probably go out here in the street and buy marijuana cheaper than you can run a jackhammer. <laughs> I, now, I thought that was funny. They did not laugh at all. I thought that was funny. So what we have here, Instead of we having these, uh, the science, we have, uh, none of these are approved by the, by the US government. We have a, we have a problem uh, that we've been talking about uh, tonight. Well, some myths we have to overcome. Some myths we have to overcome. And I just, uh, uh, I, I like, uh, I don't know if you know, many of you know that uh, Harry Anslinger was uh, head of the uh, uh, Bureau of Narcotics there for a while. And he had some terrible things to say about this. And I, uh, marijuana is an addictive drug which produces its users insanity, criminality, and death. Anybody dead in here? I need to be <laughs> careful. Okay. Uh, marijuana leads to pacifism and communist brace, brainwashing. Well, I, I thought pass, you know, not fighting might be good, but you, you smoke a joint and you're likely to kill your brother. Um, I've, I had a brother, and, and, and sometimes I thought about when we were younger about, you know, killing, but not, not that seriously. The, he said a lot of things, and, and these, are, these are very educational type of things because they show the attitude, attitude of some government agents that, that we have to deal with. I also put up here something, I was down to the um, uh, uh, DC last week and, and talking uh, to the uh, about marijuana. And I took some of these out of there. Federal, some of these are from the uh, 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 headlines I've, I've gotten. Feds raid marijuana dispensaries in Colorado. And 
just about marijuana and they, they uh, you know, put the, even though the federal government said they're going to back off, uh, they can raid a dispensary. Uh, prisoners of war uh, from, uh, talked about Richard uh, Sherry and Kristen Floor. Uh, Vietnam, Richard Floor is a Vietnam veteran who had a, uh, a medicinal business with marijuana. Uh, they arrested him, uh, put him in jail, uh, locked him to, to the bed, and uh, he died uh, there. Uh, his wife was sentenced to uh, jail for a couple years and fined uh, $288,000 because she happened to water the marijuana plants. And that left their daughter uh, to try and hold everything together and pay off the fine and that. So it, it, life's, life's ruined. Lives are ruined, okay? Lives are ruined. And so this is a, a, a thing we need to fight again. Now, one of the things I, I thought that we should look at is what's happening to uh, the use of marijuana and the attitude that we have about marijuana. And this is the public opinion. I took this off the... Uh, uh, the Drug Enforcement Administration, uh, I'd read their numbers off the uh, uh, web today. They estimate it's uh, $9,893.09 for cost per, or per arrest. And so that they're arresting a lot of people. I can see where their budget goes. The, but the legalization, people that are feeling about legalization, you can see there has been a trend up from 1969 to 2013. And what I wanted to say, this is similar, this is similar to all natural product medicines. So marijuana is following the same type of trend. Uh, if we go back to the early 1900s, the drug was accepted. Marijuana was certainly used. You took marijuana to, uh, what did they use? Uh, heroin to get you off marijuana or marijuana to get you off heroin? I can't quite remember here, but one of those ways. Um, so that uh, is acceptance. But as we moved into the period when we got antibiotics and vaccinations, we gave the, the, the natural product medicines were deemed bad, okay? We had to go into the modern world, in my perspective, modern world. And we kind of hit the bottom here in the 1970s and 80s, and we kind of had a reassessment. Uh, and we began to the acceptance of some of these. Of course, uh, uh, people would go to the, we have, I have stories of people going to the doctor that tell me, and they don't want to tell the doctor they're taking a natural product of any type, but they'd tell the nurse because the nurse may be more understanding and the doctor would chew them up, uh, we yell at them because they're taking, not, not taking a modern medicine, but taking a back medicine. But we've moved, we've acknowledged, we've gone to this. And uh, acceptance uh, for all natural products, I think, in about, I began, I think it began about 2004 of my arbitrary time. And I think that we can look at uh, marijuana is certainly being accepted by the public and undoubtedly will be by the medical field also. Well, where are we? Where are we? We're here. We're here. And I think it's, we need to keep, uh, if we're going to uh, work with this, we need to keep <coughs> functioning on the medicine side because we know the challenge is also there's a recreation side. And people are uh, probably still against the recreation side and more for the medicine. Uh, I did a, 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 uh, just a comparison of medical research that's been going on I did this today. Uh, if we look at the studies, the scientific studies, and we talked about science is the, the age we're in. We're in the science age now. We're not in the stone age. We're in the science age. Uh, ginkgo, which I thought you know, was kind of an arbitrary pick here. Uh, ginkgo, of course, for those who are not familiar, helps you uh, blood flow better in the brain so you can think better. Um, we tell all the college students that, so that uh, they, they, they get excited about that. Um, ginkgo, from 1970 to the present, 294 uh, research articles on ginkgo, 59 on cannabis. So we have a lot of work to go with cannabis yet in order to, in order to catch up with it. Um, the, uh, we want to move away from this. We want to move away from this, okay? We want to move towards this. We want to move towards this. And I think it's happening. It's happening because groups like this are pushing for it. Uh, it's groups like this that are having a say. And I think that's, that's what we have to keep on that track. Uh, when I, my dream, my dream is that we're going to have this over the next few years. We're going to have an integrative medicine where we have natural medicine with a herbalist. We're going to have conventional medicine with a pharmacist. 
and we're all going to be kind of working together to maintain health, to maintain health. And that's, that's, where, we want, that's where we want to be. Uh, so with that, uh, I'm going to disappear into the sunset. I want to thank you very much for listening to me. And uh, if you want to uh, ask me some questions, why, I'll be around here. Thank you very much.